The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. I'm here to stand up for wrestling. I am here to give the fans a voice. If you're not watching the promotion right now, you're missing out on something I think that uh, could possibly shape the future of wrestling, and I mean this wholeheartedly for the next five to ten years. Nobody can touch me. Nobody is better than Adam Cole. This company is still existing, yet they have to do this at the 11th hour to make sure that they run the state meetings. I thought TNA was going to be different, and I guess not. This is truly the Kevin Owens Show. Pentagon Jr. is the win beneath Huntley. The only thing that we get a 10 for sure, maybe at 11, is Ken Shamrock showing up. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you. Uh, Heath, not only are you one step closer to getting a WWE SmackDown Live contract, but you guys at Backlash could become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Wow! I have to get that out, man. Tag team champions, SmackDown and you get a contract. And I get a contract. There you Dude, go. My family's here. They got to witness this. They're here tonight. Yes. You, you, let's go see them right now. My kids are ready to party. I'm ready to party. Mom is ready to party. You're going to party. Woo! SmackDown out team. Kids. Ladies and gentlemen. Wrestling to the Max! And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Welcome, everybody, to episode 211, part two of Wrestling to the Max. I'm your host, Gary Vaughn. And, of course, joining me today on this episode is, like always, our co-host, Mr. Paul Leeser. Heyo. And Sean Garmer. What's going on, everybody? Hey, this has been an exciting time, guys. It's been tiresome, exciting, but one of those crazy weeks that we all love. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about tonight, and I am so excited because we finally get to talk Lucha Underground again. Season 3 started this week. We get a chance to talk about that, get in depth on what happened. Uh, Paul's going to lead us down that road. And, of course, we're also going to talk about, like, you know, always, we're going to talk NXT, get into that, and some Cruiserweight Classic talk as well. That continues on, and some big, you know, victories for a couple of guys there on that show. And we're also going to do a little TNA Impact Wrestling talk because Delete or Decay happened. That's right. It was a big, interesting thing. You want to hear us talk about it. So we got lots of stuff like that. And, of course, some news spring in this show that's right we always have quick hits we'll have some interesting things to get into and of course you can't forget our back- backlash predictions are on this episode as well so if you want to know what we think is going to happen this weekend you're going to get a chance to find out so a lot of great stuff i am stoked but you know most of all sean and paul i am stoked about what's going on now we have a new venture if people listen closely they got a chance to hear it on the beginning of this episode we now have finally got a website Ah, man it's it, sean i mean we've done a lot of things with this podcast we've grown and had a network but now there's a website yes there is a website it's called w2mnet.com uh, basically, WTM and Network smashed together because WTMNetwork.com was taken already. Uh, so, you know, we kind of did the what we could with that. Um, I, I kind of like it. I'm used to it. We've already had to use that as a uh, thing for some of the staff things that we've done in in the football section. Uh, we, we do have uh, four sections for it. It's kind of bare bones right now. Uh we're, I mean, Paul's done a lot in the wrestling part. Uh, we've all kind of banded together to do stuff in the football part and the games part. I have stuff that in my emails that I still have to actually put onto the site. There's so much going on. Uh, it's a small amount of writers, 
And since we didn't have the site launched for a long time, I didn't want a ton of people that I have kind of set up to write all in the site messing around doing stuff already so who knows we may have a bigger backlog of things we got to put up there when we get the rest of the people already writing but i mean it's it's cool like every year we've done something with this podcast or with the network or whatever to make it go another platform another thing for us to be on and hopefully this one is the one that gets everybody in into not only the podcast but into things that we write like you know we do loose underground and roh reviews well paul's been writing roh reviews for the past four weeks three or four weeks and he did the loose mm-hmm. underground review for this week so you know now you can go not only hear what we say here you can get paul's like full perspective and hopefully we'll be able to continue that with more wwe stuff and whatever as time goes on but hey this is your time you hear this, you go, oh, man, I, I want to have a little spot. I want to have a voice. To I don't have a place to write. Go there. There's a, uh, you know, you can just email me, s. Garmer, uh, s.garmer at gmail.com. You know, either send me some kind of what you'd like to do or, and give me an example so I can kind of evaluate, you know, where we're at there. And, you know, if you fill a spot, you know, welcome. Uh, just guys, I mean, I, I don't know if you have sent, I kind of rambled on here, but you know, this is cool. This is a, a big uh, thing. No, it is definitely a big thing. I, I mean, Paul, I mean, you've done a lot of work on this, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of rewarding, I'm sure for you to get a chance to put your thoughts out there. Not only that, to get to share. So, uh, you know, give us some idea of what you're doing. So other people maybe get motivated, you know, what's going on. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much, uh, so far it's been me and Sean in the wrestling zone uh, handling all that. So I'll be, uh, like Sean said, I'm writing Ring of Honor reviews. Um, I have Death Before Dishonor and like three weeks worth of ROH TV reviews up there now. Uh, I did Lucha Underground this week. I'll be covering Progress, um, which I think they have a show, of, uh, Progress 36, coming up. We need a bigger room again, uh, which they're doing out of the O2 Academy, which is going to be a freaking ginormous show. Um so I'll, I'll be doing that. And then I'm also doing the Wrestling Time Machine podcast now, which is a little solo effort by me, which focuses on retro wrestling reviews. Um, there's a poll up on Facebook and the Wrestling to the Max group, as well as in the uh, the actual article on the website. So go vote on that. There's a bunch of great choices out there. And, uh, man, if you want to talk about rambling, Sean, you can hear me ramble for 22 minutes about what the heck I'm trying to accomplish with that thing on that first episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. That is awesome, man. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you, Paul, you're doing it, and, and of course, we've got a lot of great writers already. But we need more, and, and Sean already outlined it. If you're I mean, interested, Rick wrote a really nice article on why Brock is the new streak, which you know it took me a while to edit, but I, I thought he did a really good job with that. And I mean, Randy did, you know, Randy Isba, who we had on here for the draft episode, he did a hell of a job making tables and adding pictures for the top 25 polls that we did and the uh, pick them that we did for, for this week that's coming up in, in football. And uh, Daniel's done a, a, a video review for, for No Man's Sky, and Randy did a Madden review. That's there as well. I'm working on video game reviews right now. Uh, I actually have to go, you know, I'm working on working with developers, but... Uh, I have to go buy Mark a game to go send it to him so he can review. And uh, just, man, this is going to be hopefully something where, again, you know, we can start small and it, it becomes, it, it slowly progresses and gets uh, bigger over time. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm predicting. Uh, you, you will probably mm-hmm. see all of the uh, things called W2M Network changed into W2Mnet.com. Don't be alarmed. It's just. It's all sort of transferring over to the website, and you will probably see more uh, more activity from people inside the group uh, that will sort of become admins, and we will have less activity in the group. Not that we won't be around, but because we have so much going on with the site and all the other stuff that we do, um, I kind of had to transfer. Or I'm going. I'm in the process of doing. I've got to make sure I pick the correct people because you pick the wrong person, it starts. 
Hellstorm. Uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, you probably noticed that I haven't been as active in there as I normally been. But, you know, it's just, it's hard to try to be involved in, like, 20 different things at once. So, you know, the group can still be the awesome thing that it is, just, you know, it'll have less W's from people presence, you know, and more of you guys just doing what you do, going in there and bantering about things and posting about stuff and, you know, everything else. Exactly. So, I mean, like you said, there's plenty of opportunities for people to come and be a part of this thing, and it's exciting. It really is. And uh, we're just now getting started. Go check it out right now. But this is just the beginning. Trust me that it's getting built better and better every day. So, uh, but saying all that, I'm predicting maybe, you know, we do something big every, every year, maybe an app one day. I don't know. Just some thoughts yeah. on that. So, uh, yeah, just never know. Anyway, well, uh, you know, we have a lot of things going on on this show. Um, we kind of talked about the website. We're excited about W2Mnet.com. Uh, but, you know, I just want to throw it real quick, uh, you know, to Paul real quick. Paul, you went and saw an exciting show tonight before we get into other stuff. Uh, give people an idea of what you got to see live and in person tonight. Yeah, I went out to uh, a local indie here in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, VIP Wrestling um they're doing this big double shot uh this week here tonight that it was cody rhodes and chris hero main eventing which was absolutely incredible uh they also had ray Rowe and shane taylor and keith lee who we've talked about a fair bit on ring of honor reviews and, uh, and a bunch of other local talent and it was, it was a great show uh i mean not to mention i actually got to talk to cody and brandy a little which they were very very nice people and Brandy Rhodes came up with that entire Bola entrance on the fly, which is endlessly impressive to me because it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, it was a great time. It was a great time. I'd do it again. That is totally awesome, man. And I'm glad you got a chance to do that. You know, it's one of those special things you'll always remember, and mm-hmm. that's really cool. And, of course, uh, did you post a picture of you and Rhodes on the group? Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole awesome. album of everything in the group for that main event, and then there's some stuff on my own page that I put up, too. Cool, yo. So everybody, go check that out on the Wrestling of the Max group. You'll definitely get a chance to enjoy those picks. So, all right, guys. Well, you know we've got some other great things we're going to do on this show. I think the first thing we need to do though is get this predictions going for Backlash. So, uh, Sean, I don't know if we have a theme tonight, or are we just going to go with it? I don't know if Sean can hear me. I don't know. Maybe be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, you know, the thing is, the volume button and the mute button are like right next to each other, uh, and sometimes I'm pressing the mute button and it thinks I'm pressing the volume button, so it doesn't, uh, <laughs> it doesn't unmute me. Uh, yeah, I do not have the uh, music, no music right now. I don't even know right, if no they worries. if they've had a theme. I have not seen them really promoting the theme. So yeah. I haven't either. It's not a big deal. I just want to make sure because I hate sometimes like, oh, here we go. And then like, hold on, music. So, all right, let's get this thing going, guys. We got some matches to get into, like, you know, these uh, new women's championship that they have over there on SmackDown. It's their own brand of the women's championship. And we've got this whole six pack challenge going on. And we've got, of course, Natalia. We got Naomi, Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Bella, and Carmella. All involved in this match. I mean, there can only be one winner. Uh, who do you got coming out of this thing, Paul? Man, this is uh, this should be really fun. I think um, I don't have tons of high expectations, but I think this will be a good match. I'm still sticking with Becky Lynch uh, to walk out of there with that nice shiny white and blue belt. So uh, hopefully, she comes out with a win. But they've sort of been building everybody up. It kind of feels like it is fairly open. To me, but I still, you know, it's either Becky or Nikki, and I'm going with Becky. Uh, Who are they, Sean? I, I really hope it is Becky. She deserves it, I think, more than any of the other women there. I've said it a bunch of times, you know, when the Divas Revolution thing wasn't taken off, and they needed somebody, and Sasha was hurt, and it was Becky that was really the only one that the fans are really sort of paying attention to. And she's kind of carried that through and now being sort of the sharing the duties of being the, the sort of face of the women's division on Smart that with Nikki. Though I can totally see them put it on Nikki because she's the 
the more known commodity at this point. I think you they you really need to just kind of make a statement and get and have Becky win. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I think Becky Lynch would be my favorite to win this. I feel like you know it's kind of something that needs to happen, uh, especially being the first winner. Uh, but then again, I, there's a part of me who says that it would be really fun to see somebody like Alexa Bliss steal it away. A, a new person that has not had a lot of experience on the main roster, but also, you know, kind of the saying, hey, this is youth and this is where we're going with. But I really feel it's going to be Becky Lynch. So I think that'll be pretty much the end of that. But uh, so, you know, we'll have to see. Let's talk about, though, another big match. Let's talk about the Intercontinental title with The Miz facing off against Dolph Ziggler here. Um, I'm really curious to see what happens in this because there's a... You know, so maybe some things that could take place, like, you know, maybe Maurice gets involved or even you know, maybe Daniel Bryan sits at ringside for this one because of the whole Miz thing. I don't know. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you ask me personally, I, I just I got to say that maybe I'm going with a Miz. I, I hate to, you know, give it just to Dolph Ziggler just because I don't know. What do you think, Paul? I'm uh, I'm going with Ziggler in this case, I think. I think they want to, I, I don't know if the, the title change is necessary, but I think giving it to Ziggler certainly gives you somebody who's had a lot of attention since the brand split, somebody who's, I think, really kind of stepped out of his shell a little. And I think they give Ziggler the belt here, and not to mention it can keep the, the few going with the Miz. So. Uh, yeah, I think you, you didn't have Dolph win the the, the world title. It wouldn't hurt if Dolph beat Miz here, but I think Miz is just so good at what he does right now. I don't see a reason why you need to have him lose. Uh, They could continue to have Dolph kind of feud with him if they want and sort of be Daniel's proxy, I guess, the way he has been. But uh, I feel like Miz just needs to keep it at this point until they really find somebody that deserves to kind of beat him. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I just, I kind of feel if Dolph Ziggler gets it, it's just a hey, thanks for not, you know, uh, winning at the, you know, when you went for the world title, Dean Ambrose pinning you. Hey, I'll give you the IC title instead. So I don't know. I, I, I love Dolph Ziggler. Don't get me wrong, but I, I don't think he honestly needs the Intercontinental title. I think he can get over pretty much by himself. So. Uh, let's talk about another big match that really concerns me, and this match is Randy Orton facing off against Bray Wyatt. Why does it concern me? Well, I've been saying on all our podcasts, i just fearful that here we are, just another person to put down Bray Wyatt. But at the end of the day, I don't expect you know Bray Wyatt to come out of this standing. What, what do you think, Sean? It's really hard for me to think that they're not going to have Orton win. I just... Bray doesn't seem the type of person that you want to have Orton lose to if you're thinking of the WWE hierarchy and the way that they've always had Bray lose these big matches so that you think, okay, well, he should win this so that you feel like he's going up in the world. At some point, there's got to be that for him or he's just never going to get anywhere. It's not like Undertaker went around losing a bunch of matches. He wouldn't be who he is if he... The hell, the guy made his name off a of WrestleMania streak. So, I think at some point, you can say all you want about Bray doesn't need to win, Bray doesn't need to win, but it obviously affects how people see him and how much he will believe in the stuff he says, especially when he's talking about things that go over everybody's head, if he loses all the time. So, in a... In a nice like delusional world would I want to say that Bray wins sure but there's nothing that WWE's made me believe that Bray is going to win here so I'm saying Randy Orton I'm going to stick with what I've been saying and say this is a no finish probably a double disqualification you, you nailed it on the head though Sean if you're going to do anything with Bray Wyatt you got to do it now there's no better time you can have him stick out and be something special for Smackdown I think a double disqualification with him and Orton and you just have him beat the bejesus out of each other for 12 to 15 minutes is all you need to do. And then you can keep going forward and build this feud into something more that helps get Bray over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would love that. I hope that happens. (laughs) 
<laughs> I really do. I just, man, I'm so concerned that, you know, once again, it's, uh, you know, hey, thanks for taking the pinfall against Brock. Here, here's your next victory. So I hope what you're saying is going to come to fruition, Paul. I think it makes a lot of sense for both guys, and it would help. So, uh, you know, it's just hard sometimes being a Bray Wyatt fan, to be honest with you. I love him. I want to follow him, but sometimes they make it hard on you. Uh, well, let's go ahead and talk about a big match that's going to be take place that will continue on uh, for one tag team on to another match if they are victorious. And that is, of course, the Hype Bros facing off against the Usos to earn a chance to win or not win, but uh, to face off against Heath Slater and Rhino for the tag team belts. So let's go ahead and figure out who we think is going to meet up with those two guys later on in the show. Who do you got, Paul? The Usos or the Hype Bros? I just have Usos written all over it. They can go out there. They can have a good match with the Hype Bros, show off some more of them dirty heel tactics that they're now going to utilize. And uh, they'll go on to that uh, tag title match and crush Heath Slater's dream, I think. Oh, no, you can't hurt all the gingers. That You know, they'll all be in the audience. Those oh. poor seven kids, they're never going to get to that double wide. Oh, that's <laughs> breaking my heart. Oh, Well, Sean, are you breaking their hearts, too? What, what do you think is going to happen with this whole series? I think uh, for sure Paul got it about the Usos. It doesn't make any sense at all to have the Usos turn, and then you don't at least make the final. Now, obviously, they can go two different ways here. They can go with Slater and Rhino winning. Slater gets the contract. Rhino already has a contract, so you continue them as a tag team. Or uh, you do the whole, we're going to get you this far, but we're going to break your heart before you get there. That seems a lot more likely. It's a story that's very easy to tell. And it's a story that's going to get people talking and people emotional and whatever. And and that's the story that sort of works with with Heath because he's a goof and... You'll want to see him win, but if you immediately have him win the big one off the bat, do you cheer for him in that same way later when you get past that point? I think I'd love to see the the happy ending for Heath. And you could make the case that you can have Slater and and Rhino win because the bigger thing is for the American Alpha and Usos to go after each other whenever Gable's okay. But having Gable and Jordan have a trophy to go after as well as the Usos, I think gives it bigger stakes, and that's kind of what you want as first, as your first big tag team title feud post having the titles. Yeah, I mean, you guys pretty much said it. You know, I'm going to go Usos as well. Uh, and, then of course, you know, sorry to say Heath Slater, you'll have to wait for another chance for a contract. I just I, I think that, you know, the Usos are going to be the champions, the heel champions, like I said. So, I mean, enough said, really. Uh, so, you know, saying that, uh, let's see here. I think we only have one other match, if I'm not wrong, on this card. Um, we lead up to the big match, of course, with Dean Ambrose. And uh, actually, do we have another match? Oh, we already talked about the women's match. I'm making sure we didn't miss anything before we get to the main match. I think there's a possibility of Baron Corbin and Kane being added at some point. Okay. Well, let's just say it's, that does take place before we talk to this championship. Quick reaction. What do you think on that match? Is it just Baron Corbin slaughtering Kane or what? Uh, God, I have a, a brief brief encounter. Uh, Kane? Uh, I think, well, I mean, I'd have to say, like, you got to have Baron Corbin win. Or, again, he's just going to become one of these. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If he's going to be your other Apollo Crews or he's just a guy, then I guess you can have Kane win. But I don't see the problem with you're building up Kane for this and then you have Corbin beat him. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's what you do sometimes. You just build up a guy randomly and have the other guy you really want to go over win. Yep. That's exactly the way I look at it. As Kane's been doing all this stuff just to look strong, that way when Corbin wins, it matters. Because <laughs> right now Kane hasn't been around and he doesn't matter. Uh, it, so this is it, what it kind of comes you know, to be. It's like on Raw, I think Bo Dallas is getting beat up so that you have a sort of credible challenger for Braun Strowman. It, just, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Yeah, very true. So, uh, all right. Well, now let's do talk about the WWE Championship match that will be taking place, and that is Dean Ambrose, the champion, 
facing off against AJ Styles. Now, this is going to be something I think kind of special. It'll be a lot of fun to watch, but I mean, at the end of the day, where do you see this going? I mean, uh, who's going to become out the, the champ? This is a tough one. This is one I really feel like you can go either way with, and you'll have a strong argument. Is Dean's title reign over? I don't know. I, I've enjoyed it. It hasn't been the most interesting thing on TV, but it has been the most consistent thing on TV, I think. But AJ's just been so great. He's riding the hot victory off of John Cena. I think he wins it here. I, I think that the case can be made for Dean to keep it, and you maybe have AJ win it later, perhaps on a SmackDown, and then you transition into a Randy Orton and AJ feud, or you just have AJ win it outright here at the Backlash every I'm just saying don't discount them possibly doing it on a SmackDown because they they do, they are in a mode of wanting to get TV ratings. So, it, I mean, that's totally not out of the question. But I think you give AJ the win here. Maybe you have Dean and, and AJ go at it again. Like I said, on the SmackDown, AJ retains, and then you start something with Orton. Um, I just, I think you've gotten AJ this hot, you need a strike while it's there, and not kind of mm-hmm. string it along, because there's always that chance that he cools off a bit, and it doesn't have the same feeling to it that it would have if you just go ahead and go with it from that first chance you get. Exactly. I'm right there with you. I think AJ Styles, this is something big. He has been the guy that, you know, going around claiming, you know, he is the new, you know, guy that runs the place, you know. And uh, I think this is just going to help that. It's going to be a big deal when he's holding that title around his shoulder or waist. And people are going to get even more aggravated with him. And it's going to be a kind of a heat grabber. Whereas, you know, Dean Ambrose, I think he's going to try to come back, you know, get his rematch later on down the road. But I think right now what the most important thing is is really getting more heat for AJ Styles and, of course, a great match, which I think they'll have a good match. I'm looking forward to it, and I, I don't think it'll disappoint, if you ask me personally. So, uh, But, yeah, that pretty much rounds out the card for Backlash. You know, uh, I'm so used to running down a card like, you know, SummerSlam where we got 15 matches, it feels like. But <laughs> uh, here we are. We got a few, and I kind of feel dirty not having more. But I'm glad this is going to be hopefully a good show because it's not so full. This is a, a special thing. So, all right, guys. Well, of course, you know, if you want to hear us talk about more backlash, come check us out. We'll be live on Spreaker.com Sunday night. We'll get into everything that happens on backlash we'll be talking about what the results were of course and you know maybe give you some of our hot opinions about what's going to happen in the future after that big event happens so and of course if you want you know it'll be available on monday morning for you on your drive to work so maybe you get a chance to watch the show go to sleep next morning you can even talk about it with us uh, as you drive to work you know we like when people talk back to us and we can't hear them it's fun uh so anyway <laughs> we will uh you know if we answer back you may want to pull over uh but anyway uh so you know <laughs> i talk nxt next can you imagine like somebody's just saying something about what we're saying and and they just uh, go oh crap he just answered me what the hell i know right uh, how do they I know just... what i'm thinking I can hear people now just saying inappropriate, Gary, inappropriate. So, uh, I'll anyway, say that all the time. Vanguard Gary. one. That's how we know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vanguard one. Uh, but here we go. NXT time, guys. We'll do that right after this. Oh, we're not doing uh, news. Are we just doing, we're going straight. Uh, you want to do, do NXT do, first? That's fine. I, I figure we could do NXT first to kind of give us a little split up between some of these reviews, if you don't mind. It'd be cool with me. That's fine with me. Let's do it. All right. WWE Developmental NXT. All right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, d- just to throw this out there, unfortunately, we have ne- neither of us have been able to watch that CMLL show. So, 
and don't know if we'll be able to watch by the time Monday comes, so that might be one of those things that we preview that doesn't get reviewed. But, hey, at least we did one of them. Uh, sometimes that just kind of happens, you know, with these these things that we usually don't talk about, but we at least try to preview them, you know. But uh, I will also be just frank that I, because of all the stuff we've had to do, I really didn't get to watch a whole lot of wrestling past SmackDown. Uh, so it'll be these guys mostly kind of talking you through things here. I'm just going to kind of lead you through these shows. Uh, you get TM61 against Arya Davari and Tony Nese. Pretty cool uh, tandem from the Cruiserweight Classic. Seems like it was a good match. What would you guys think? I thought this was pretty good. Uh, Nice and Davari uh, m- maybe didn't have great chemistry as far as working together went, but they certainly both look great. And uh, they're, they're a strong team that you've quickly become somewhat familiar with for TM61 to beat and look good with. And, man, TM61, they're, they're really good. They're just they're so good. They're still trying to find their their feet here in WWE. But when it comes to wrestling, these guys know what they're doing. Oh, definitely, and you can tell it. I mean, it, these guys are just amazing. They're high flyers, like they keep talking about. You know, the announce team just goes on and on about that. And I, I think this was a good matchup. You know, sure. You know, Davari, uh, you know, Anise didn't exactly have the best chemistry, but at the same point, they put on a good match. I really felt like they held their own. I really didn't think it was disappointing. Um, you know, it, it could have always been better. But at the end of the day, I feel like it was a good, you know, start to the show. You get to have a couple Cruiserweight Classic guys on there. You get to know who they are. And, I mean, the right team won. And that's the way I feel. And, you know, TM61 is just a lot of fun to watch. So, there you go. Yeah, and then we get... Uh... A little interview with Asuka, which I kind of talked about last week about perhaps we need to go with the angle that nobody is ready to face her. And you need to build up the rest of the division before you just throw someone into a match with Asuka. And that's kind of what they did here. Asuka talks about all the people that she's beaten and that now they've run off to the main roster so they don't have to wrestle her anymore. (laughs) Nice touch there. And she's blatantly asked, is anybody ready to face Asuka? She says no. She also says a couple of things in Japanese here and there, too. I, I thought this was pretty well done. And you also get Steve Cutler, who's going to wrestle Nakamura on the show tonight. He, uh, of course, has to say his generic line before talking about Nakamura not knowing what sacrifice is. But, yeah, and you also get an Ember Moon against Leah Vaughn squash here. The crowd, of course, was really into Ember Moon. Yeah, I mean, it, what's uh, cool about that match was, you know, the fact that, you know, we get a chance to get to know more about, you know, uh, Ember Moon, and, and of course, you know, Vaughn did her good, you know, stuff too, so I, I think it was a decent match, I mean, both of them put some good things in, you get to know them, like I said, so, you know, it, it's more of a match that, you know, it, it's about introductions in a way, I, I kind of felt like this was not super spectacular, but it was still good, it was still good, and once I get to know who they are better, I think I'm going to get into those matches more. But right now, I'm just kind of, you know, learning. I uh, I love the Asuka promo. The Whenever is anybody, I think main roster or an XT roster is what he meant. And she says no one's ready. She ain't wrong. She's going to head kick everybody no matter where they're from. So uh, hats off to Asuka there. <laughs> Ember Moon looks great. Uh, like, uh, the old face is going to get her over so fast. Yeah, uh, exactly. The the one thing that uh, I want to say about the Oscar thing was is, do they have inner ear pieces for her? Like, is someone translating for her and then telling her, okay, this is the English phrase to say? Because the way she speaks it, I know she's having to work it in her head, but it also kind of sounds like say this and they slowly pronounce what they need her to say in English. Maybe I don't know. It's just I was thinking about that the whole time. Like, more if they have an inner ear piece for her because we've all heard that her English is not so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she's still new to the language and still trying to learn it. And English isn't exactly the easiest language to, to create a grasp on. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's very possible. It's very possible. But I think, I mean, I think she speaks English well for Mm -hmm. how well she, for maybe how little she knows. 
Oh, I agree. I mean, even though, yes, it was a cadence, I still felt like she did a good job. It mm-hmm. didn't really take too much away from her personally, if you ask me. Yeah, she spoke slower in English, but, I mean, my goodness. I mean, I think that she still portrayed what she needed to portray. Like Paul said, she basically gave you the whole, there's no one, I, I've went through the whole list of who, who else can I beat, you know? So, it's cool. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, we find out that we will sort of get a a little bit of... I mean, I don't know how much we are going to get because they haven't announced anything else. But we are going to get different matches, not just the finals on that. I think it's supposed to be a two-hour special uh, for the Cruiserweight Classic show. We're going to get an NXT title match if Ciampa and Gargano are healthy between the Revival and Gargano and Ciampa. Uh, so I'm always in favor of that kind of thing. And, you know, Ciampa wants them some revival after what they did to him. No, sure, uh, didn't didn't expect anything different there, I think. And you get a almost eight or nine minute match here with Andrade Shinelmas and Austin Aries after their little face-off last week. Austin Aries wins. It's a pretty good match. And then Bobby Roode's going to take on No Way Jose next week as well to kind of just have them... Go uh, go uh, off after uh, Jose had an interview here too. What do you think of uh, this stuff here with Almas and, and Aries? It's another good match. I'm still like Almas needs more quickly because he's quickly getting lost in the shuffle. Aries looks fine here. It, it's nothing out of this world, but it's still good. Uh, something that still would say is worth your time. Uh, Ciampa and Gargano versus the Revival. Whether it's for the tag titles or not, I really could care less. I just need that match again. Just make it happen. Yeah, it was good. You know, it was a really good match. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad that Austin Aries was the victor here. I was kind of worried that Almas is going to, you know, take the victory just because, you know, he's a newcomer and he's also the younger guy compared to what Austin Aries is. But I think it helps to build on this with Austin Aries winning and I think it will. And when it really matters, Almas is going to do, you know, the work and put it into a, uh, a good match. And I think he's going to take on the victory eventually. But I, I think this makes sense for this at this moment. So I'm happy with what we got here. Very entertaining match. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then we get Steve Cutler and Nakamura, which you can pretty much guess what that was with uh, Joe on yeah, Nakamura, uh, you know, C- <laughs> Cutler is our new champion. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> would you imagine you get on here and say that, you know, just to, to, that would, people would probably like, uh, what, you know, of course, <laughs> you know, usually when you have the name Cutler, you don't win very many things. So sorry, Chicago bear fans, not trying to point at you, but I am pointing at you. Uh, but anyway, Paul, what did you think about this? Even though it was, you know, just to showcase for Nakamura to, to make another victory happen in front of Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe, man, talk about just very mellow. You know, he almost looked like he should be very depressed. Yeah, I, I think Joe is the main takeaway from this, because otherwise, if we're talking about the match, it, it's squash city, you know, squash city all over the place. Uh, Joe, uh, the thing I really loved about Joe is when they caught him on camera whenever Shinsuke's being, you know, Shinsuke, he's, he's like, scoffing or just looking totally disinterested or almost mad that Nakamura is being this goofy guy in the ring and uh, almost sort of incredulous that this guy beat him, which I thought was a really nice touch. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, it's just one of those things that just showcases that Joe is a veteran through and through. And, you know, whether it be in the ring or outside the ring on the mic, I mean, this guy is just awesome. And he really was the story of that entire match. The match was just, I guess you want to say it in a way funny to say eye candy, just so you could see Nakamura do his stuff. And it was really about learning about Joe. You know, post you know, uh, you know, Brooklyn. So I, I kind of like that psychology in a way. It's kind of cool. I appreciated it. So not a bad way to you know to to conclude this thing. So all right. Uh, well, that pretty much concludes uh, NXT. But uh, before we jump into anything else, uh, we're going to talk some Cruiserweight Classic next, and of course we'll jump into some news after that. Uh, but you know, uh, 
yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Sean, you want to go ahead and talk Cruiserweight Classic? All right, let's do this. Uh, I, dang it, it's going to probably take, well, I can stall for a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> well, let's banter about, uh, you know, what's going on in uh, the Cruiserweight well, uh, Classic. The <laughs> the possible signing of uh, Akira Tozawa might have already begun. He lost the Open the Triangle Gate titles this week. Ooh, I like that. It's a uh, big signing. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a big deal. Uh, he's had him, his team's had him like forever, right, Paul? They've had him for a long time. Yeah, I think they were getting close to that year mark. Uh, it's, uh, Ryo Saito, uh, Genki Horiguchi, and Jimmy Kanda. So the, uh, the Jimmy's team beat, uh, him, Masato Yoshino, and T-Hawk, uh, after, uh, Horiguchi pinned T-Hawk with a backslide. So, Tozawa didn't take the pin, but still lost the titles. And, of course, he's getting, uh, a big uh, open the the Dreamgate title shot uh, on the on the 22nd, so which might be his farewell if if all things are kind of going to plan. I still hear people talking about that they might do some one shots for Raw Bat. Like I swear, I heard Triple H firmly say they will not be using people on Raw if they're not signed. So. Uh, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could. Just mm-hmm. seems weird to have talent on there. You know, like having Akira Tozawa sort of be your jobber guy is it's weird. <laughs> they held those for 273 days and made five defenses, which is, I believe, the second longest reign. And Oof. ties the most defenses. Wow. That's something there. For sure. Masato Yoshino's also held those belts ten times. What a beast. Jeez. There you go. Learn, yeah. uh, learn things every day there. There you go. Uh, let me uh, All right. get this going. All right. If uh, my computer decides that it wants to be nice, that, w- that would be helpful. Here we go. Alright, so Cruiserweight Classic, pretty easy here. You get the two quarterfinal matches that haven't happened yet, which is uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and why am I blanking? Oh, Noam, Noam Dar. Dar. Yeah. Easily Noam Dar's best match of the tournament, considering who he's facing here. But, uh, yeah, Zack Sabre Jr. wins. I swear I heard, like, they must have either changed it or somebody heard the spoiler wrong. I swear I saw spoilers that Noam Dar had uh, upset Zack Sabre Jr. But, no, that is not the case. Oh. Sabre Jr. wins. Yeah, and, th- and this was a blast to watch. I mean... Uh, you know, uh, how could you say it wouldn't be just by seeing these two guys in the ring? But uh, overall, I mean, I like the way they went about this. And, you know, we have Noam Duar, uh sitting there trying to take care of business by, you know, injuring um, Zack Sabre Jr.'s leg, which makes all the sense in the world. You know, injure his leg, keep him from moving around too much. Uh, and then you have Sabre Jr. working on the arm of Dar. So... Both these guys, you know, doing a lot of that psychology, you know, using it to its full effect and injuring uh, body parts, which is very smart, especially when you have your finishers come into play and, of course, your submissions. So I I think they did a really good job here. Like I said, you know, you you come to expect this out of these two guys. So it's not like it's a surprise, but it was, I mean, super enjoyable. Zack Sabre Jr. is so incredibly talented, it boggles my mind sometimes. The way he stretches people is just incredible. The the the, the double arm bar thing he uses to, to make Dar tap is just one of the most sickening things I think I've seen this year. It was, that was gross. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the match is fine. Uh, fine. It's really good. It's really, really good. 
sort of that quality we've been getting from the entire semifinals where it's, it's at least easily north of three and a half stars every time. And um, these guys went out there, they put on a clinic. Uh, it mm-hmm. starts out a little shaky, but you certainly get all the technical wiz- wizardry you would expect and lots of strikes. Uh, definitely. And, you know, you mentioned the, the submission there of Sabre Jr. And, you know, that's also why he works on the arm, you know, like I said, psychology. So, uh, but I love the fact that, you know, Mauro Ronaldo is so awesome. And, you know, I was educated throughout this match because of him. And uh, he was talking about the fact that, you know, that was a staple of a, one of, Sabres, you know, not mentors, but one of the guys he looked up to. I thought it was really cool, you know, to have that history there, to, to know that this is why this guy does it and who he's paying homage to. I like that. So. Yeah, Ronaldo and Brian have just been an absolutely dynamite pair. And, uh, I, I mean, Brian's interesting on this one because he's still, he's still sort of downtrodden that Brian's been eliminated. So, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh, and the other match is uh, probably equally as awesome as Rich Swan and TJP. How was that, guys? I think I liked Zack Sabre Jr. and Noam Dar just a hair better, but we're really talking about breaking out the, the super fine knife and splitting the smallest hair you can find on your body. Uh these guys went out there. The crowd was way more into this one, too. They love Rich Swan to pieces. Uh, TJP is is over, but, I mean, when you have somebody across the ring from Rich Swan, that, that, that full-sale crowd doesn't care. They want Rich Swan to win. They were behind him the whole way. And, unfortunately, he ran into TJP, who was just incredible and having himself a dynamite year. And uh, These guys went out there. They put on a show. Everything that you got in the other match, it went the other way in this one. He had the technical wizardry. This one's all about high flying and TJP working holds when he can. Um, and man, they, this was great. It was absolutely great. I agree. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Once again, just another entertaining match. I mean, TJ Perkins is a guy that I've been, you know, watching for a little while now, and just he he doesn't, you know, seem to stop amazing me. And, of course, you know, Rich Swan's a guy that, you know, uh, you know, been on NXT before, has had a lot of great things, you know, when it comes to just showcasing, you know, just his athleticism. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, uh, you get two guys to get together and just put on a one heck of a performance, if I can speak. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, really thrilled that, you know, Rich Swan got this far. You know, I wasn't sure. I, I knew they were going to kind of push the NXT guy a little bit. Um, but I wasn't sold he was going to go this far. And by him getting here, it just showcases that, you know, he's a great talent and people believe in him. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the first names announced for the Cruiserweight thing on Raw. So makes me wonder still if we're going to have him, we're going to see him make the big upset. Or even, or even, uh, Grand Metallic made the big upset of Ibushi. That's going to be interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. It, it sure is, and so I'm looking forward to those next matches on the Cruiserweight Classic. You know, this can be coming up soon, and <clears throat> so. Well, which which one do you think is more likely if if you had to pick one of the upsets? What do you think, Paul? Uh, TJP for sure. Um, just because I think I, like they they've hyped up how big Kota Ibushi is on this show. Um, throughout the entire thing, how he's the favorite to win and all this stuff. And, you know, I really, honestly, God, I, there's a part of me that kind of wants WWE to put Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre in that final. But then again, you know, if, if this does end with somebody supposed to be crowned as a cruiserweight champion or something like that, and we haven't heard any news on that about what these guys in the division are going to be fighting over, then, uh, you know, I mean, maybe it does end up being TJP and Grand Metallic. I th- no matter who you put in that final, though, that match is going to be incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, d- I definitely agree. I mean, this is lining up to be one amazing, you know, finale, and uh, I'm thrilled about it. I'm excited, that, and you know, no matter who does win, it's going to be exciting. Even though, you know, you, you once again, Paul said it, Abushi, one of the big fan favorites here. I'd uh, love to see him get in there. And, of course, you know, any of the rest of these guys would be exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well, that is the Cruiserweight Classic for you guys. Uh, we are going to jump into some news topics here, some quick hits. Uh, I currently don't see anything in our dock. Um, 
but I will I'll, also. I'll be doing it, kind of. Okay, by I have my hand here. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm just making sure we we usually double check each other and just make sure we have everything correct here. But we got some other news that I'll throw out there, and we'll get into it right after this. We'll talk some quick hits. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. All right, guys. Well, let's talk some news from this week. And, you know, we were uh, talking a lot about, you know, the future of TNA recently and Dixie Carter, you know, kind of being on the back burner a little bit because she's kind of taking that role uh, of, you know, basically being more in a leadership role in the office and not being out there. You know, of course, Billy Corgan being the new president. Saying that, we're getting more and more uh, people saying that, you know, Billy Corrigan really wants to buy TNA. Now, is this fact? I don't know. Well, you know, it's just all hearsay. Uh, but I just want to know what you guys think about that. Billy Corrigan is already kind of running the show a little bit here. You're getting to see his fingerprints all over Impact. What do you think about this guy being the complete owner, taking the reins completely? Nobody else like Dixie Carter having any say. Uh, you know, I don't, if Corgan buys it outright, he's got to have some serious financial muscle behind him behind, besides whatever's already in place there. Because I have to think if he already bought into a, a minority owner stake role, ownership role into the company, which I'm sure wasn't cheap. And then you have to keep having all this money to keep finding, you know, the venue and everything to, to take the television shows and all this other stuff. And even though TNA hasn't been on the greatest financial wave of success at any point, um, and maybe the last, what, five years, uh, I still can't imagine buying it's cheap. So he's got to have somebody else lined up with him to buy this thing, and it's not just him. Yeah, I, Paul makes a lot of sense here. Um, you can't, I can't imagine he's just using what, Whatever he's got left of that uh, Smashy Pumpkins money to just be coming in there and buying TNA, he's got to have some people in there with him. I mean, he's he is Billy Corgan. I'm sure he does know people, so it's not out of the realm possibility this is really happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it might be the best of the company, though, to just fully get rid of Dixie and fully get rid of all the stuff with TNA and yeah, perhaps even go through a name change or whatever it is they decide to do, but... It's going to be interesting times to see if uh, Billy Corgan does, in fact, do that. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'm really interested in seeing, you know, if that could ever take place because of the fact that Dixie's held on so tightly to this company, even in its darkest days. Uh, they're finally getting to see a little bit of success here. And, of course, Billy Corgan was a part of that. So I wonder if Dixie's going to still say that she had a lot to do with it or. You know, if she's going to feel like she's kind of getting put out when it comes to people giving someone else the credit, you know. So we'll see. I mean, this has been her baby for a little while now, and I think that she would love to see it through. But if she doesn't, it means that really, honestly, I think she is kind of done with the project. So I just don't see it happening, though. I I just, unless for some reason Dixie's just deciding she's just ready to move on, I think she's going to hold on to it as long as she can, you know. Yeah. She's put a lot into it, and I'm not saying it's been great, but she's put a lot into this company, you know. So uh, let's talk about something else that's kind of interesting here, and this is something that is kind of on the future of someone else, and that's Tyson Kidd. Uh, what we're hearing now is the fact that you know his deal is about to be up, and the WWE, you know, is really not wanting to sign him back to a performer's contract. I don't think that they really want to take the risk with his injuries, history, and the situation when it came to the seriousness of his surgery. So they would love to hire him probably as a coach, uh, maybe you know a producer, something on that role. Uh, but they really are not interested in signing back as a talent. How do you feel about this? Do you think Tyson Kidd should do something like you know go ahead and head out to the indie circuit, or do you think maybe? for his future, kind of like Daniel Bryan, maybe take that role of a producer or maybe even, you know, a a guy that's not wrestling but still involved with the company? I mean, he's got NXT cred too, so he can always go down there and train and all that good stuff. I'm sure uh, he's such a a tremendous worker that uh, 
I, I just got to think that you would want him down there working with those guys uh, you have coming up. But I, I completely understand WWE not wanting to resign him in a performance contract. He took a neck injury that should have killed him, and uh, he's still around walking and all that good stuff. So, I mean, thank God for that. But I... Like, this is a neck injury that might have been more serious than anything Brian had. It's it's really bad, and it's always touchy with neck stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think it just depends on where he's at right now in life. You know, if he wants to keep performing and WWE's not going to let him do it, then there are a lot of other places out there that would love to have him. But at that same time, you got to think of your health first. And if they're still going to pay you a good amount of money and you can still be around the business and you can still help train people or be a producer or whatever they're going to want you to do, I I would say you're silly for not at least considering it. Uh, what are we talking about again? I'm sorry. We're talking about Tyson Kidd. Oh, the, the possibility. You know, yeah. The thing with Tyson Kidd is like Paul kind of said it all there. It's just that it's like Daniel Bryan. It's like Kurt Angle. Do you want him to possibly die in in your ring and then be responsible for that? Think about, like, just, just think about, like, all that stuff TNA went through with Jesse Sorensen and then Sorensen decided to, you know, just go on his own. And he he wound up being fine, right? It, now that we've heard, now that he's, he's done uh, squash matches for NXT, I mean... We've seen him around, right? Like, it's possible that that's just a freak accident and nothing like that ever happens again to Hudson Kid, and he can go on wrestling if he wants to, and he can go, I don't know if TNA would take him, I'm sure ROH probably would, or yeah. or whatever, you know, if, if, if uh, I really think those rumors are kind of a stretch about Cesaro leaving, but say Cesaro left, and they both went as a tag team to New Japan or something like that, I mean, it's all possible, uh, I just think that when you go through something like that, sometimes, you know, those are like calling cards. Those are like, you escaped. You may not want to sort of risk it again. You know what I'm saying? And perhaps this yeah. producer role is, is best for him. I, I just, I don't want to say, look, no, you shouldn't be wrestling. But I just really am worried about Man, you that's that's like Paul said. There's been people talking about that that should have killed him. He's still living. The value of your life that you have because you know you get in that ring again and something like that happens. You may be paralyzed this time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's just you know you feel bad for guys like that. You know, kind of like Daniel Bryan. You know, the whole debate of. You know, Daniel Bryan still got that itch. Is he ever going to get back out there? You know, he could always, you know, leave and go wrestle in New Japan, go wrestle for another independent company that, you know, would love to have him. Uh, That's going to sell out buildings just with his name on that, you know, uh, banner. Uh, But at the end of the day, is it worth him taking that risk of getting another concussion, you know, injuring himself so much further than he already is, and then he's dealing with neurological issues that he never wanted to have just so he could wrestle one more time or, you know, for another couple of years. So it's a uh, risk reward situation and a Tyson kid, man, I, I just, you know, like these two guys are saying, I just think it's not a wise decision to try and tempt fate again. Cause fate is not really always in your uh, best interest. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with him. One guy we do know, that is actually going to take the job as a coach at NXT, and that is Scotty Too Hotty. Uh, better, you know, that's his better known name, but you know, if you want to know his real name, Scott Garland. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. You know, they've been bringing guys in, you know, and letting them train, you know, but you know, the full time guys are guys that stick around and do this, and guys they actually believe are going to help their talent. So. I, I'm kind of not that I don't think this guy's a great coach. He may be. I've never been around him, but. I thought this was kind of interesting. You know, they got a guy like this. Do you do you think that you know we're going to see some more signings pretty soon here? And what do you think about Scotty Too Hotty? Honestly, doesn't surprise me. Scotty's been around WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it, for a very long time. Uh, he used to job for him before he got paired up with Brian Christopher uh, for for Too Sexy and all that stuff. So um, 
you know, it, it's it's cool uh, to see him continue. And, like, the man's had longevity. He's been around the ring so long. He's got a lot of knowledge he can pass down, so good for him. If they keep doing this, though, I mean, you keep making solid signings, you're going to have yourself a nice little uh, – a nice – group of coaches, a nice group of whatever producers, whatever you're going to call them, you're going to have a real solid group of people. And you're like that. There's going to be endless resumes of people wanting to learn from these guys, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Scotty's always been one to, they, they had him come in sometimes during those early days of full show NXT and number Gary. And mm-hmm. you'd be like, Oh, is this the time we're going to get to see him? I uh, just, I don't think it would be a bad thing to have him, whether it's just as an NXT trainer or whether he shows up on the main roster for some shows or whatever. Uh, he's he's always a good guy, and then the fans like him. So that always helps, too. You know, he'll get a better uh. reaction than the headbangers. <laughs> Poor Hi, headbangers. Marks. That's all I care about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Uh, yeah, I, You know, it's probably about you know how I would do if uh, Eugene showed up and Everyone else would be like, who's this guy? Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, WB still, you know, they're signing coaches and they're also signing more talent. And apparently they signed seven guys from China to come over here and wrestle and practice and develop in their system. This is interesting. You know, we already had heard about one big superstar coming from China and getting the opportunity in WB, but seven more. Wow, man. They. Apparently, really want that demographic. They really want that country to be paying attention to their product, which, can you blame them? I mean, that's a huge population to get if you can get China watching your show. Uh, but this is kind of interesting. Uh, what do you think is going to come out of this? I, I have to imagine this has to do with their connection with Ho Lun now. Uh, like, the guy opened the first pro- promotion down in Hong Kong. You have what seems to be a, a swelling interest in trying to get wrestling going in China. And... Uh, I mean, like you said, if they're trying to capture that audience, there's no better way than to get some guys who are actually from there and have them compete. Yeah, uh, that's. I mean, they've been trying to get in China. They signed the the one guy. I forgot his name now. Uh, when they made that deal with for TV or for that sort of streaming service thing in China. And, yeah, I mean, they're going to try to do anything they can, just like the NBA did with Yao Ming to try to get big there. I don't blame them. You, you want to get big in China. It's... Yeah, I mean, you, you got to. I mean, if you want to be, you know, considered a, a global scale product, you've got to have one of the largest populated countries uh, in China, you know. So it only makes sense, right? Uh, let's talk about one last thing here uh, before we get out of quick hits. I want to mention Joey Ryan uh, uh, Styles. I said Joey Ryan. Uh, I guess I'm thinking about crotches. Uh, Joey uh, not Styles. Is just Styles? Joey Styles is here, not crotches, uh, and he is no longer a part of WBE. Um, of course, we've heard this, and uh, the big story here is that he is going to be working with Evolve now a little bit. You know, we we heard some rumors that he wasn't really interested in coming back to wrestling right away, uh, but apparently he is going to be working with Evolve, and he's going to have some say a little bit here. Uh, and you know, if he feels like it needs to be said or things can be better, he can make it better. He's going to you know put himself in that place. What do you think about this, Paul? I mean, uh, Joey Styles has definitely been a guy that's been around the business for a while. I mean, I don't think this is a bad move to have him around Evolve. No, I uh, I remember reading this in the uh, the Evolve newsletter that I get that uh, they have this like sort of unspecified position for him where he can sort of show up on shows and make matches, but he's also there to sort of work with talent and sort of pass on his experience in the business. Uh, so, I mean, it, not at all. Like, this is a place I think he'll do well in. Uh, whether he wants to call matches again or not is whatever. But uh, he has the obvious, you know, connection there with Gabe Sapolsky from ECW and everything. So, uh, makes a lot of sense, and I hope it works out for the best for him. I can't – I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I, the uh, last set of shows he was on were great, and Joey Styles can only add to enjoyment for me. It was great. I don't see why why not to you, you try to get him in here for this. And they're smart to to already have him in. And if he calls matches, great. If he doesn't, I mean, it's not like they have a bad team doing that already. He can do other things for him and 
going to be a great asset, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and you know, once again, it goes back to that knowledge he has. You know, the, the you know fact that he's been around the business for so long, it's going to help. And I, I think it's going to be neat. And we'll have to see where actually, uh, you know, this whole thing takes him. I'm excited. Well, guys, that is quickest for this week. Uh, of course, you know we'll be hitting well, some more had, big news. Uh, okay, go ahead. Um, well, there is a new Japan show on New Japan World this week. Actually, on Monday, or is it Tuesday? Looking at my calendar here. No, it is Monday. Monday morning, there's a Road to Destruction show. It's their only house show before the three destruction shows that are going to matter that are days later to a week or so later. Uh, So look out for that. And you actually, if you have New Japan, well, you might want to go watch their documentary things. Uh, They have a big long one with Kenny Omega. They have some with Osprey and Michael Elgin, and even the ones that are with Japanese wrestlers, they've gone back and put subtitles in them, so you can actually understand what they're saying if you don't speak Japanese, and it actually lets you kind of into their personal lives, the stuff that they do, and it's it's actually kind of fun uh, to, to watch sometimes. Uh, also, they added, uh, ROH added some, some teams to the uh, six-man tournament, they added the Briscoes and Torianu, so you get a repeat of the first ever uh, never open weight six man tag champions. Uh, so they won those at at Wrestle Kingdom, if I'm not mistaken. And you also get uh, Team CLL coming with uh, a weird team, but even so, you get Okamura, uh, Echisedo, which ROH spelled his name wrong constantly. On the on their website, nothing new for them. They spell people's names on their website all the time. And Ultimo, true. And Ultimo Guerrero, which is an awesome uh, grab for them to to come. So, two teams out of that tournament makes it even better. Yeah, they uh, on the last episode they also announced that uh, the Briscoes and Yano will be facing off the team uh, Jay White, Leo Rush, and ACH, which is a freaking dynamite trio, if you ask me. <laughs> for sure alright guys well that's uh, some cool stuff mm-hmm. and then I don't know if you guys have seen the gif uh, from uh, the cause Star World uh, Stardom's having their Grand Prix tournament right now which is like their G1 mm-hmm. and I don't know if you guys have seen the gif or gif of uh, EO uh, doing a pile driver to, to Kyrie Hojo on the outside uh Kyrie got a concussion out of that, so she's out of the tournament until she recovers. So that kind of sucks for the rest of that tournament because they had a hell of a match. And she's obviously one of the best wrestlers there, so she's going to be out for a little bit. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. Feel forward, but yeah, I mean, at least there's some exciting stuff coming your way when it comes to New Japan. So definitely go check out that stuff, and we'll uh, keep you posted. Besides that, we are done once again with Quick Hits. Uh, we appreciate everybody uh, checking out these. We've got more for you next week. But uh, now we're going to go get into some more shows. That's right. We've got some other things to talk about, like the fact that Lucha Underground Season 3. Yeah, I know. It's back. I'm excited. Uh, Paul is going to break that down for us. And don't forget, right after that, we're going to talk some Impact Wrestling with that Delete or Decay. But now let's jump into some Lucha Underground. And just to let everybody know real quick, uh, Paul is the only one who was able to watch this. So, Paul, I mean, definitely run down this show. Kind of give us your thoughts, and maybe me and Sean can chime in. Yeah, um, I'll I'll leave it open after certain parts here. But uh, we jump right in. Uh, Dario Cuerdo is... Cuerdo? Wow. Uh, He's working out in prison. He's doing some pull-ups. A guard comes in, unlocks the door, says he must have friends in high places because he's being released. And he goes to the desk, the desk sergeant, easy enough for me to say. And it's the freaking honky tonk, man. It's incredible. <laughs> He's handing him his, his possessions. And uh, he goes outside, and there's a limo waiting to pick him up. Inside is Councilman Delgado, who tells him that all the charges have been dropped. 
And there's some mysterious guy in there with him, too, who's got, like, this sick metal gauntlet on his hand and promises that if uh, Dario messes up, he's going to kill him. But uh, Dario promises that, uh, don't worry, it's not going to happen again. The temple's back in business, so. Everything oh, wow. is looking rosy for El Jefe. El Jefe? Wow. Speaking's hard. And we move on. Uh, Striker and Vamp- tired. Yeah. <laughs> Striker and Vampiro welcome us to the temple once again. Vampiro promises that he is no longer anybody's master. He's just a commentator now. And I can already tell you that's going to go tits up by the end of this show. (laughs) Uh, And we go on to the ring. Dario and Matanza are hanging out. Uh, Dario's got a couple of announcements. First off, Rey Mysterio and Pentagon Dark is going to be your main event. And he knows that nobody can stop his brother, but he's willing to let everybody who he hasn't already beaten have a chance and to make it fun, he's made this big, uh, almost roulette wheel uh, with a bunch of names on it. And he'll spin the wheel every week, and whatever name it lands on, they get a title match, so long as Montanza hasn't already beaten him. Uh, so this week it's Son of Havoc. And Havoc comes into the ring, all spit and fire against Montanza. They have an awesome match. Uh, they work about eight minutes to perfection. Havoc uses all the speed. He gets a lot of his dives. Uh, he hits the shooting star press, which has the whole temple thinking he's about to be the champion, but Cueto takes, uh, Matanza kicks out. And uh, Matanza pretty much catches him, throws him up in the air, and uh, hits him with the Wrath of the Gods in this incredibly violent display. And Matanza is just awesome. Uh, this sounds freaking awesome. And uh, just I'm glad that they kind of followed up from Ultima Lucia dose and kind of got son of havoc a shot already so mm-hmm. yeah at least that kind of didn't go to waste after they had the fans get all happy and then that kind of died but uh that's that's pretty incredible and this uh this sounds like it was a pretty good match here so awesome stuff uh-huh. I want to ask you a question. Did the uh, at the beginning of the show you're talking about the limo and the guy in the limo? Do they show his face or just you only saw his hand? Just the hand is the only thing you see, and he talks in Spanish as well. Maybe it's Doctor Claw. Maybe he had time to take some Spanish lessons. <laughs> just sort of branched out in his uh, plot for world domination. Exactly. You know, they, they, he'll show the cat. It'll appear eventually. God, say, we better get a secret agent character on this show then. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes is available. It's true. It's true. He does look rather dashing, I must say. Yes. Uh, so we cut to Dario's office. He's hanging out, and Worldwide Underground walks in, which is Johnny Mundo, PJ Black, Jack Evans, and Taya. Johnny wants the Lucha Underground title. He wants a match tonight. Dario says, hey, man, you lost an Ultima Lucha dose. Why do I have to give you anything? Um, they flash back to something I don't believe we saw at Ultima Lucha Dos, and that was Worldwide Underground beating up Angelico in a parking lot and sticking his leg in a trunk and essentially breaking it between the door um, or his arm or something like that. And they all laugh over it, but Dario still refuses um, Johnny's sort of attempt to, you know, placate him for that title match. So Mundo downgrades and says, all right, I'll go for Zexy Star and the Gift of the Gods title. And Dario says, you don't deserve that either. Because none of you guys won an Ultima Lucha except for Taya. So Taya gets the title match. And then we come back to the ring. Eva Lisa is in there and she wants to beat Katrina. She's cost her matches back to back at both the Ultima Lucha events so far. So on the very first episode of the season, she challenges Katrina to a match at Ultima Lucha Trace. Very interesting move here. I'm curious to see how well they can book out a year long feud between them, especially one that's already had so much into it, but um, should prove to be some interesting television. And the crowd is so hot for Ivalice, by the way. They're in, totally in love with her. And uh, then we get the Sexy Star tie match for the Gift of God's Championship, and commentary is very quick to bring up that it's never been successfully defended, which I found very interesting. The match isn't really anything to speak of. Um, near the end, Worldwide Underground comes out. They distract the ref. And uh, Mundo holds Sexy Star down, but Taya misses with her double knees and flattens Johnny in the face with him. And Sexy Star rolls her up in a small uh, small package to get the win. 
And then under Worldwide Underground attacks post-match, and they get ran off by Phoenix, Aerostar, and Drago, who beat them for the trios titles at Ultima Lucha Dos. So, any thoughts here, guys? Okay. Ah, I mean, it sounds like they, uh, you know, have some interesting things going on here. And I'm with you on the whole year-long feud. I mean, that really interests me because you got to put a lot of effort into that. Not saying that they can't. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, uh, keep it in something interesting that long. It's it's kind of tough. But saying that, we're talking about Lucha Underground. Every week doesn't have to be about that feud. So that's the good thing. They can take breaks here and there, like once every other week, or you know, have some storyline mixed in here and there. So it's not like they're forced to throw it in and put it in your face every single episode. So I think it works, and it's something that's it's kind of neat in a, in a way too, because you're already talking about Ultimate Lucha Tress. Wow, already. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy that they're already setting this up for. Uh, next year, but I'm glad that they're continuing this feed because this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Katrina still got all of her teleporty abilities and all that. So, seeing as I mean, last season we pretty much learned that she's some sort of necromancer. So, <laughs> God bless you, Lucha Underground. You're so good at this stuff. But <laughs> uh, so we go back into Dario's office after that. He's on his red phone talking to somebody. And Marty the Moth walks in. He's glad that Dario is back. But Dario doesn't want to talk about his little vacation with anybody. uh, Because he's innocent. Whatever you say, Dario. Marty, however, wants to conquer the temple. Dario laughs right in his face and says, uh, Dude, you clearly still have problems with Killshot because you still have the dog tags. So next week, we're going to have you two involved in a weapons of mass destruction match. And... uh, Marty sort of is in love with the idea and laughs so maniacally that Dario just is sort of freakish, freaked out by the whole situation. <laughs> uh, and then we move on to the main event. Rey Mysterio takes on Pentagon Dark. This is actually quite good. I, I put it right up there with what we got in the opening match. Uh, Ray looks... The lighter schedule, I think, is doing wonders for him. He's got that smoothness back in him. Um, so effortless. And Pentagon Dark is just great in this as well, but Pentagon sort of, uh, you know, he hits him with the, I think it's the gut check, that sort of fold up pump handle slam thing he uses and uh, gets him the near fall, but Pentagon goes to the outside and decides to mess with Vampiro some. Vampiro leaves the announce table because he can't be out there anymore and Ray comes back in or Vampiro, Vampiro, excuse me, Pentagon comes back in, Ray hits him with this uh, pile driver, then hits the 619, and then a second rope destroyer to get the win. Uh, Pentagon uh, attacks Ray after the match and goes to break his arm, but Dragon Azteca makes the save because he got his arm broken at Ultima Lucha Dos, and he's not going to let that happen to the guy who's taught him everything he knows, right? So, um, Then we flash to the end here. Prince Puma is hanging out in the locker room reflecting on his loss to Ray at Ultima Lucha Dos. But Vampiro shows up and says, hey, man, I I know how you're feeling. I got some advice for you. You haven't really been the same since you lost to Mil Muertes back at Ultima Lucha Uno or Ultima Lucha from Season 1 or whatever we're going to call it. But you need to go back and get your win back against him. And then that will hopefully set you back on the right path that you want to be on. And uh, Puma's kind of surprised he doesn't want to go after Pentagon. But Vampiro says, hey, man, we're talking about you here, not my stuff. And that's how we end the show. Wow, I mean, that's really cool. Uh, you know, Vampiro working, you know, there with Puma and, you know, getting some things going in the right direction with that situation. I like that. I think that makes sense. The story seems intriguing. Uh, so that's good. So it sounds like, man, they had some actually some really cool, you know, ways to, to really get things started already. Uh, I'm excited already about this whole thing. Yeah, I gave the show a seven. Uh, 7 out of 10. They, they do really well on this job, I think, of setting everything up, really showing you where they're going to go with the season. Um, and, and the wrestling is good, too, which always helps. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, if you know, of course, if you're like me and you have not had an opportunity to go watch this show, definitely go do it. Uh, this is setting you up for a lot of things, and you don't want to miss this, because if you do, you're already kind of missing out on you know the whole story. So, uh, take a minute and go watch it. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, that is Lucha Underground for you guys. We are going to move on now, and we are going to hop into some TNA wrestling. So hold your horses, because here we go. We are going to jump into uh, some Delete or Decay. Uh, and just a little preview. Randy just messaged me, what the hell did I just watch in, in reference to uh, Delete or Decay? So oh, love it. <laughs> But he was also one of those that did not was not a big fan of the first one, so Aww. he was one of those that like just thought it was the dumbest thing ever. So I'm sure you will get a lot of people that that thought the same thing uh, with this. So mm-hmm. it's, it should be interesting. Uh, let me here we go. TNA Impact Wrestling. All right. Uh, can one of you guys sort of run this down? I've got to do like two or three things here. Well, I'm. Uh, I mean, I I was the uh, basically the primary guy watching the show. Paul, if do you have it in front of you, I can go ahead and start it out. Yeah, and, go and ahead. Kind of talk about you know, uh, and kind of help me fill in the gaps because my memory is not exactly great at times. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so here we go. So the show basically starts out, and they have a little uh, start with the Deleter Decay um, stuff. With of course, you know Matt Hardy and getting you prepared. You know they kind of recap what happened last week, talking about you know prepare for you know prepare the battlefield and all that stuff. So we get some interesting stuff here with uh, Matt Hardy and of course you know Brother Nero, and they're getting things ready and they're preparing. So. Um, but really, the beginning of the show really does base uh, itself around Mike Bennett and uh, really Maria Canellis as well, because we have them running down, you know, why, you know, Moose is irrelevant. Um, he screwed them over. He should be thankful for them, blah, blah, blah. That's the same old shtick you get from them. You know, we have always hear this stuff from them. Uh, Dixie comes out because they mentioned Dixie in the promo, basically saying no one's going to stop him from being, you know, the next TNA champion. And Dixie basically says, you know, well, you know, if you want to be a, you know, champion, uh, you've got to earn your stripes. And so she puts him in a match. And, uh, of course, you know, he is not thrilled about this, but he is going to have a match uh, against Moose. So, that's a big deal to him. Maria Canellis also gets uh, a little bit of hate uh, from you know Dixie Carter because you know she won the title basically by having someone lay down for her. Uh, so now uh, apparently Dixie Carter and the people in the boardroom think that you know, well she's a talent that has a belt now. She has no right to lead because you know she's just like everyone else. So she lost all her power when it came to the knockouts division. Because Chanel is the Knockouts champion, so they get a lot of stuff in here, um, and it's it, it is interesting. Don't get me wrong; it takes a little while to get through it. It really does. But at the end of the day, you get the understanding. And Moose, of course, comes out to try to you know knock out Michael Bennett. That's unsuccessful. But at the end of the day, you know that match is going to happen. Uh, so you know. Following now, I guess I don't have to go complete order here. I'll just throw a few other things that we have happen in this show. Uh, we also have this new grand championship being debuted. Uh, Billy Corrigan comes out and debuts the championship, talks about it. They have a little video package explaining how it's done. You, of course, you have three judges, you have three rounds, uh, and of course, you know you can lose by knockout or submission. Uh, and, of course, they do have two matches on this show. Uh, one is Drew Galloway against, uh, I'm blanking now already. Braxton uh, Sutter. Braxton Sutter, thank you so much, which was actually a, a decent match here. Braxton Sutter got some things in here. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you do have you know a situation where Galloway does win uh, by submission. So... That's important here. We also have, you know, leading up to this whole debut, you have Billy Corrigan getting interrupted by Galloway. Galloway giving his shame old stick. You know, if you want to use Galloway to his full potential, you're going to get a great wrestler. You're going to get a champion. So that's where we get led into this match because, you know, Billy Corrigan gives him the opportunity. 
Uh, and, you know, once again, I think Braxton Sutter had his great opportunities to look good. No worries there. No problem with that. I've really appreciated his ability to really showcase himself against a guy like Galloway. But at the end of the day, you know who was going to win. Uh, and then, of course, we have Eli Drake uh, as the next competitor in one of these bouts. And he is facing off against uh, someone else. One of the uh, – uh, Jesse Goddard. Jesse Goddard, thank you. Uh, it's we're all tired here, I guess. I, I, my my mind doesn't work that way. Uh, but yeah, Jesse Goddard's in this match is more even. Uh, both these guys get a really good back and forth, um, and you know they go through a few rounds. But at the end of the day, we do have Eli Drake winning. Um, so and of course he uses his finisher. Uh, it doesn't go by submission. Uh, so we have those matches, and I think we're also we also have a. a I think we had another one, if I'm not wrong. Maybe that was only two on the show. Yeah, um, just the two Grand Championship tournament matches on this episode. And, exactly, and thank you. And, and uh, from, you know, like I said before, I had concerns coming into this. You know, Paul, Grand Championship, we saw the, the you know, the kind of MMA tie in here, you know, with the whole judges thing. I really don't feel like that they did a bad job, though. I was worried coming in that it was going to be so tied down to being like MMA was not at all, at least not in these early stages. So I was happy with that. I felt like that they did a pretty good job. And I actually like the look at the belt. The belt actually looks quality. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm sure other people may disagree, but I, I thought it looked classy for my personal. I think it's one of the better looking belts TNA's ever had. Um, their their new X Division title I'm not a very large fan of uh, the the King of the Mountain title the TV title whatever you want to call it it was just this gaudy mess to me um, but I really like to look at this one it's very simple but reflects I think everything that you want uh, that reflects the division and the nice thing about this division and is you're giving guys an opportunity to go out there and work matches that have a built in story element to them already because you see guys. Um, like, like in the, uh, in the second match or the, so you, excuse me, in the Galloway Sutter match, um, Sutter is already down two two rounds to nothing. And he's got to come out going for that win. And he's, he's fighting and scrapping the whole time in the, in the third round and before he gets caught in that submission. And so you have really easy ways to work in psychology and all this into these matches. And it seems like it really pays off. Not to mention guys like Braxton and Eli and Jesse don't always get to show off what they can do in the ring. And this way, they're sort of guaranteed some time to go out there and really work a match. I definitely, I totally agree with that. And that was what's special. And not only that, with the clock, you know, you have the clock right there. And uh, if you're a sports fan like me, uh, the clock is a, a very pivotal part of that. And it really gets you excited, but it also gets you a little tense mm-hmm. because you're counting down that clock and you're like, man, the guy I want to win isn't doing very well. Is he going to lose this round with, you know, and of course the story kind of like you said, Paul leading in, you know, being down two to nothing, you know, you've got to now have a victory by knockout or you get to have right. victory by submission. And it brings it kind of like into that overtime mode. So I love that for that fact, I wasn't sold right away, but this And these two matches kind of sold me a little bit more on this grand championship. Now, this is one episode. These are just two bouts. Later on, we'll see how well it is working out. But right now in the debut, it looks like it's good. So Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that and everything that comes out of that. Uh, So we have those matches take place. um, And and I'm going to let Paul look and see what other matches we also have on this show uh, besides the ones I've already mentioned. Uh, but I will say this, we also had a contract signing by uh, EC3 and, of course, um, Bobby Lashley, uh, where Billy Corrigan is, of course, the moderator here. He, it's, this is a whole boxing thing where they're out there and they're you know, out there talking about you know, their side of the story. And EC3 is basically saying how he's going to be Lashley, vice versa Lashley, to him. So it's, it's a very big fight feel. Uh, you kind of feel like you're watching something out of MMA or boxing. Uh, of course, you have behind them that big, you know, Pop TV and TNA Impact logo everywhere. I mean, it, it's made to be very professional. Uh, so I appreciate that. They kind of had that. But at the end of the day, what do you think is going to happen, right? There is a brawl. It leads out to basically, you know, all the way to the backstage until they get to one of the bays, um, the open door of the arena. So 
these guys have a whole long bout. It's kind of funny in a way just to see these guys throwing each other around in their nice clothes and ripping it all apart. So it was fun. It was kind of interesting at the same point because of what they said in this. So if you've not heard it, you may want to go check, you get a chance to check it out. They, they kind of threw out a few things that you may be interested in. But for me personally, it's kind of stuff we've heard before. Nothing spectacular, you know, if maybe a few new cut downs to each other. But, you know, it was good. Yeah. Um. So, you know, besides that, making a big five feel, Paul, I mean, it was just normal. Uh, what are the matches I'm missing here? I, I want to wait and save the leader to cave for last. Yeah. Jade and Gail Kim uh, went, uh, tagged up against Allie and Sienna, where Jade and Gail Kim go over because Sienna sort of turns on Allie officially here. Allie accidentally hits her um, with a move uh, meant for Jade, I think, and uh, Sienna hits her with her big move and then walks out on her. And let's Jade and Gail Kim get the win. Uh, I think we also missed that uh, next week on Impact, they're going to have a number one contenders match for the Knockouts Championship for Bound for Glory. Um, so you have that going on next week, too. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. So, you know, the Knockouts get some love here. They get some time. Uh, of course, this all ties back to Maria and Dixie Carter. Right. So, uh, But, yeah, I mean, that was not a bad match. I mean, once again, you know, these Knockout matches are okay. Nothing spectacular. I think the storylines are more interesting than really the matches themselves. Uh, so uh, you got to feel bad for Allie. I think that's what this is all leading to is Allie's kind of being the one being abused. And, of course, Sienna's the big, strong muscle in this. And it's kind of funny to say, but Gail, Kim, and Marty are kind of the the background of this in a way. It's kind of weird to say that, right? Uh, but they are. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, I'm jogging my memory. Any of the other matches that I'm missing here that I forgot about? That's it. Besides uh-huh. final deletion. Um, okay. we have another video package for Tyrus. Um, and, uh, next week, uh, Aaron Rex will face Trevor Lee in the tournament and Mahabali Shira faces Eddie Edwards in the other tournament match. And God, I hope Eddie Edwards wins that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. Otherwise I may cry. Uh, but, uh, I, I want to get back to, to Aaron Rex a little bit here before we jump into Deleter Decay. Aaron Rex has a little speaking segment here, a little, you know, just to kind of throw some things out there, you know, that way he, Galloway gets to hear him. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's so funny to me the way that they are putting Aaron Rex, uh, and his whole character into, because I think people love, this guy, they really do, especially in WB. They've enjoyed him a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm so sold on his character right now, though. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive, and I think the reason we fell in love with Damian Sandow was because of the fact that he had some of those quirky things about him, the fact that you know he was playing the intelligent guy, and he just put together some good matches. And Maybe we got to wait till he gets in the ring before I make too many judgments, but right now with this whole thing... I, I right now I'm not sure what I think about Aaron Rex anymore. I just don't. Uh, it doesn't seem like the same guy I used to remember. If I can, you know, say that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, he's a very different character. He's a guy who feels um, like he has to sort of show Galloway that he's not being wronged here. He's just a guy who ran into him, and here we are in some hatred. But they haven't really done anything to make him stand out, other than the fact that hey, he used to be this big time guy in WWE, and sort of a missed opportunity and we haven't gotten to that core character of them yet. So hopefully they can build that out in this feud with Drew Galloway. Um, it's the same thing that they kind of need to do with Mike Bennett to an extent too. Like we know he's the miracle and he's got all the stuff going on, but he doesn't have anything that really makes him stand out yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right on that, you know, and uh, I think that they'll get to it. I really do. <laughs> I think they'll eventually get to it, but you know, uh, I'm making a knee jerk reaction. So right. <laughs> it's what happens. Uh, but OK, well, that pretty much, you know, covers everything else. But let's talk about Deleter Decay. Now, this is interesting because once again, we have this build up. And, and I think this is something you really need to watch. I mean, we could cover every single little thing every single second. Uh, and I'm going to touch on a few things, but I'm not going to get super in de- detail on some things that don't matter. Uh, there's a few things that lead up to the actual fight. Um, one of those things is we have... 
a gentleman driving in his cars, you know, seems to be like an older man driving down the street, and uh, he turns on his radio, Smashing Pumpkins, of course. He turns it to a country song, and he's going down the road, and he sees, uh, you know, one of our favorite people in the world, right, going to a walking down the street, and I'm uh, blinking at her name. I can't believe I am. Oh, Mary. Rosemary, I want to call her Mary, and I said, that's not right, Gary. Why are you calling her Mary? Uh, <laughs> I know it's weird. Uh, Rosemary, and uh, she, of course, looks like a freaking zombie because her head's tilted and she's walking down the street. I don't know why this old man's pulling over to talk to her. I, I would worry if she was dying, but after I saw the makeup, I would keep going. Uh, but he doesn't. He's hitting on her. And, of course, you know, <laughs> that's bad like news. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hit on her. So uh, at the end of the day, he gets a very scary experience, and he gets left on the road face down. And, of course, you know, the rest of the K are in this vehicle driving down the road. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of funny because Abyss makes the, the comment before they peel out and drive out down the street is, I hear that Cameron is nice this time of year. Oh, kind of funny they laugh and they drive on down the road and you see the camera and sign so ah, corny but kind of funny at the same time and i think it's kind of a, an interesting little thing here very horror movie-esque yes. uh and then we also get a segment uh where this little video package uh you know of course they're preparing to get ready for this big battle so broken matt hardy brother nero and of course rebecca are all getting this thing done you know getting pretty get prepared for this big battle uh, you know, and we have Senior Benjamin digging graves uh, for Decay. He's doing this throughout the show, and of course, you see him interact with Vanguard One, and uh, it's all it's all interesting stuff. But my favorite part here is, is Broken Mad Hardy opens his zoo. Yes, he has a personal zoo for people to go and check out, and so he you know is, goes into the zoo and he sees a giraffe and he explains to everyone. That these are just not regular animals. These are animals of basically the deities that they have people actually in them. So George Washington lives inside his giraffe. Uh, and he has a conversation with George Washington, you know, and preparing himself. And he kind of laughs at, you know, says, oh, you know, George Washington, you're, you know, you're so funny, all this kind of stuff. So very crazy. Uh, he has a uh, group of monkeys. <laughs> And he goes and he explains that, you know, Brother Nero used to be a spot monkey and do just like the monkeys uh, climbing on the fence. You know, they love to jump from things. And you know, Brother Nero used to love to jump from things and hang upside down. And he learned his lesson. Uh, and he goes around and names each of the monkeys. And the names of the monkeys are like DJ Z. Uh, he has a Mandrews. Uh, he even has the Young Bucks. As his monkeys, which is amazing. Uh, so I, I love that. I think it was hilarious. They also have him, uh, I believe, with the lion. Uh, and so it, it goes through a whole list of different animals that they go through. You just need to see this. It's hilarious. Yeah, uh, it's I, a kangaroo who's smoking Joe Frazier that Brother Nero has a sparring match with. And <laughs> the, the tiger uh, is, named, is Genghis Khan and warns Matt that the Decay are on their way to do battle. Yes, yes, you're right. Thank you. And that, that kangaroo bout, it, it is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You can go on YouTube right now. Impact their their YouTube page has that bout on it. Yeah. Between it is hilarious. I, I laughed out loud very hard. Uh, and you know this all rounds out till we finally get to the battle of the leader decay. And this thing is a little bit insane, but it should be at the leader decay. Uh, of course, we have you know the K show up, and they they're planning on getting to the main premises to to take you know King Maxwell, like that's their plan. And uh, they end up you know looking inside the house, and they kind of go back and forth bantering about you know oh how sweet you know the family and all that kind of stuff. And then they turn around to see that uh, Broken Matt Hardy is outside, and he uh, says you know Decay, I knew you'd come. I love that. Uh, and then, of course, they fire a bunch of fireworks at these guys. And it seems like forever the decay is running. 
I mean, they are running and running, and these fireworks are going off, and it feels like two to three minutes, literally, that this, you know, firecracker battle is happening. Uh, but, you know, it's just entertaining. Uh, finally, you know, they take cover. Uh, then you see Rosemary is sent off by Abyss to go to the house while him uh, and, of course, our uh, clown buddy, um, are, are going to take Crazy Steve, are going to take care of business. And really what happens here is you get, you know, uh, I feel bad. I feel like I'm being long winded here, guys, but this is just a whole process. <laughs> we, we actually have a situation where, uh, there is a, the boat that's involved where, uh, we have, uh, senior Benjamin pull over the boat and then he gets to meet up with our favorite lawyer, right? Oh man. I love it. Our lawyer, uh, what's his name again? Joseph Park. Oh. Joseph Parks, I can't believe I'm forgetting all these people's names. <laughs> Joseph Parks, and he's like, "Have you seen Abyss?" Yeah. <laughs> See, yes, he has seen Abyss, but uh, eventually, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, Joseph Park get knocked out, so he is now out of the equation, and now you have, you know, more crazy antics taking place uh, with, of course, you know, Crazy Steve and uh, Brother Nero battling it out in the pool. We also have, of course. Broken Mad Hardy goes and tries to find uh, Rosemary as she's finding the baby, uh, baby Maxwell. And um, they eventually come out of the house. And this is the most weirdest, interesting thing of this whole thing. And that's the fact that Rosemary uses her spray that we've seen before. And that's how she turned Abyss into what he is. And Crazy Steve got more of his craziness from her mist that she spits out of her mouth. She spits the same stuff at Broken Mad Hardy. But he sucks it all up with his mouth. Very gross and interesting at the same time. And he spits it back out in her face and burns her. Uh, so now she no longer has baby Maxwell, King Maxwell, whatever you want to call him. So that pretty much rounds out to you know Decay uh, leaving the premises. And that's all we really get. I mean, it's it's an interesting battle. It's really more worth your time to watch it than me explain it. But I wanted to kind of go through some of the aspects of it to kind of give you an idea of what you get here. Some of the comedy you get with Joseph Parks. Some of the crazy stuff that you kind of saw in part one with the, the firecracker battle. So overall, you have a crazy fight here that is entertaining. Very weird. Very weird. If you're a horror movie fan, you're going to enjoy this. If you don't like cheesy stuff and you don't like cheesy horror, you're going to hate it. So at the end of the day, you get this crazy thing going. And I, I really do encourage people to go watch it. Um, but besides that, that ends your impact. I mean, it, I mean, Paul, I mean, I don't know how this thing reads. But it, it, it was to me, it was a step below maybe what we saw. You know, in part uh, one. But so I still what, do you th- what do you think of those of the grand championship like tournament? like how they're doing it with the sort of those MMA or boxing rules or whatever. Uh, you know, we, me and Paul were touching on that a little bit and uh, Paul made a good point and I totally agree with him. And the fact that it actually allows some of these guys to tell a story and it's not the MMA rules actually to me didn't stand out too much. Uh, mm-hmm. Really? It just, it just gave you another reason to care about the matches to be honest with you. And it gave those guys the opportunity to tell a story without me going, all right, I've seen this match of four. Let's go. How long is this one going to last? I actually kind of got interested. That clock really kind of put it down to a, hey, you know, this is like overtime. Uh, this guy has one more shot at doing something or he loses for sure. So I, I actually thought it was good for me personally. Yeah. It gives them a framework to work in, which is kind of cool, uh, especially if these matches don't have a few going or anything like that. You have a suddenly, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the guys is down going into third round 2-0, and he really has to go for the victory, and that ends up costing him the match. Uh, so I, it really, I think it works for now. Like I said, like Larry makes a good point. you got to find guys who can work the style well, and so far... Uh, I think you had four guys on here who really did it. Because ultimately, you're only going to have a nine or ten minute match, you know. Um, so whatever you bring to the table on that time really has to matter. And it's, they did great on this show from what it sounds like. Uh, what did uh, Larry say about the Deleter Decay? Oh, he loved it. He okay. rated it extraordinary. 
<laughs> so everything else on the internet I found has been uh, has been very positive. Uh, some people don't know whether it's better than the first one or not. Uh, this one, it, it just feels very de- like this is more of a horror movie aspect than a kind of a way out there wrestling match. Like mm-hmm. this feels more like what you got with um, with the New Day and the Wyatts at the compound. You know, sort of mysterious yes. and weird and funny all at the same time. Yeah, you're exactly right. In fact, uh, we have Abyss also face off against, you know, Brother Nero uh, because, well, I take that back. He was going to face Broken Mad Hardy and uh, Janet was there and Janet was going to be used on Broken Mad. But, you know, Brother Nero steps in front of the uh, attack and (laughs) basically gets the full impact of uh, Janet. So, you know, I love it for the fact that he sacrificed himself for Broken Mad, but that once again leads back to the horror movie thing and the fact that when I saw that, I thought exactly New Day and uh, the Wyatt family. That's mm-hmm. what, exactly what I thought of. So, and once again, it's something people have to watch to really get the gist of it. I mean, I've been going through explaining it, but you really got to watch it. So, uh, well, that, it pretty much rounds out impact for us this week, guys. And wow, a very interesting impact. I think it's definitely worth your time if you haven't checked out the entire thing. Once again, you know, we have those debuts of those tournament matches for the new grand championship and, of course, the leader of K and all the other stuff going on. Uh, but now we've got one last thing to do, guys. We are going to crown our superstar of the week. So we are going to do that right after this, guys. Superstar of the Week. All right. All right. Let's do this thing. With one point, Broken Matt Hardy gets the victory here. Uh, And, you know, of course, I mentioned for all the reasons I love DePaul. Um, but I think, you know, we're giving him a point because of just the, the spectacular, extraordinary thing he was doing. Yeah, I mean, he really, he is the focal point of this entire thing going on around TNA and the whole broken characters and sort of like he's been the focal point that's pulled all these pieces in and sort of made uh, TNA something that you, you might want to watch every week now just because of how outlandish the character is and uh, they certainly put on a, one heck of a follow up for with the leader decay here, and hats off to to Matt for sure for that. And the person we gave two points to was T.J. Perkins. Yeah, victorious at the Cruiserweight Classic this week, uh, Sean. Yeah, I mean they had a damn good match against Rich Swan, and he wins. So seems like a easy choice. With three points, another Cruiserweight Classic guy, Zack Sabre Jr., Paul. Yeah, I liked his match just a hair more than uh, than TJP and Rich Swan, but uh, certainly, I mean, he gets the big win. He moves on to that Final Four, and what a Final Four it is. With four points, it goes to a guy that I feel like is right there with Matt Hardy a little bit, uh, and that is Heath Slater and his tag team partner, Rhino. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Sean, I mean, because they, they uh, basically, you know, got the chance to, you know, battle it out for the tag team championship, you know, so that's going to be really cool. Yeah, that back. Makes, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, if Slater and Rhino, they've been telling the story, they get the win and, you know, go on. Yeah. Definitely. Who would have thought at the end of SmackDown they would be All right. team challenging for the belts? Right. Hi, Tim. We never would have thought that. I know that for a fact. <laughs> uh, and with five points this week, it goes to another promotion and another guy that's, you know, had to defend his championship, and that's Matanza. Yeah, Matanza, an equally as good a match with Son of Havoc this week as we saw in the Cruiserweight Classic, which is probably the best wrestling we saw on television this week, and uh retains his Lucha Underground Championship in another defense, and the, the guy is not only a great wrestler, but he's booked to look damn near unstoppable in these incredible matches, so hats off to you, Matanza. Welcome back, Lucha Underground, and enjoy yourself some five points. Exactly, so there you go. That is your Superstar of the Week, and uh, of course, you know, uh, we are done with the show for this week. We had a lot of fun, a lot of big stuff, and you know, uh, 
all of us have had a lot of things going on lately. So, I mean, uh, we've just, you know, sorry if not all of us got to watch every show. That's the way it works sometimes. And it's probably not going to be the first time, but at least we got a chance to cover everything under the sun. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, we want to let you guys know once again, you know, hopefully you got to hear a lot about uh, the, the new website uh, earlier on the show. But just to let you know, once again, go check out W2Mnet.com. That's the place you're going to not only find all the podcasts, but you're also going to find a lot of written articles about wrestling. Uh, you're also going to get some stuff in there about football. Football season's here. I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest things, so you'll want to go check that out. And, of course, you know we also have the section for uh, you know other great stuff like entertainment, which we're still working on the entertainment section. It is going to get bigger and better. But right now, the video game section has a lot of stuff for you guys. Uh, and it's going to be also growing as we speak. Each of these will actually. So, you know, that's our pretty much our home for everything now. So I'm excited about this new home. I hope you guys are too. Go check it out, please. Uh, and let your friends know. Share everything on there. We, we, you know, we encourage people to go share all the different articles. If you love our top 25 college football rankings, go send it. If you're a fantasy football fan, we have rankings on there for you. Uh, you know, of course, we'll have some other big things for fantasy football fans coming this next week as well. So you don't want to miss that. A lot of great stuff for you on the W2Mnet.com. Uh, Sean, anything else you want to kind of let the people know before we get out of here? Of course, we still have the WTM Network as well, which, you know, uh, that's part of the site as well. The, the, all the podcasts have their spot on the podcast page, and they'll have podcast posts uh, be made, very much like you see me do on 411 or Last Word on sports or whatever. They'll get a post like that that you could share and post on your group or your page if you want to. Um, it'll take the SoundCloud link, so... You know, if you're not a SoundCloud fan, we still have the various other ways you can listen to our shows. So that's that's not going anywhere. Just we wanted to give the podcast uh, an actual home as well. So uh, that, that's always a plus. And of course, um, you know, you got the the fantasy podcast. Of course, we're about to do the a double shot of the football podcast here in just a little bit. And uh, of course, with that week one preview happening, and you had the first game tonight, but you still got that full slate of Sunday and Monday games to talk about. And we did, uh, uh, right after the Sony event, we did a video games podcast kind of talking about that and what we thought of the price of the Slim and the PS4 Pro, is what it's called now. And just, yeah, I mean. That not, Mass Effect trailer. Ooh. Yeah, that looked cool. Uh, it's a bit, they were telling a lot more story than kind of showing action, which is kind of what you need to do, me. too. Yeah. Uh, um, but, yeah. I mean, the thing is, they got so many events that are kind of all smushed together. I think we were expecting a little bit more out of that thing than what we got. Forgetting that there's Tokyo Game Show and Paris Games Week and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, they got to save stuff for that, too. You know. Yeah, and talking about video games, there's a, ne- a new game coming out that I may actually want to review, Sean, and that's Friday the 13th, the game. Uh, uh, it's a new version, and it's going to be uh, really cool. Uh, people raise the money to get it going and seeing the trailers, and man, I'm actually kind of interested in playing it. So we'll see. Maybe I will review that. Uh, but anyway, guys, well, that is our show. We appreciate everybody coming checking us out. You know, I, uh, you know, it's been a big week this week. Next week's going to be great. But don't forget, this week, uh, well, actually this weekend, uh, we're going to have the Backlash Review Show. You don't want to miss that as well. Of course, that will be available on Monday on demand for you guys if you don't want to stay up late with us on Sunday night. Uh, and, of course, come check us out again next week for Episodes 2, uh, 12, and that'll be Part 1 and Part 2, of course, available Wednesday morning and Friday morning for you guys. And don't forget to also the Raw and SmackDown reviews also. So, great stuff coming your way. Uh, but until then, uh, we just want you to remember, for myself, for Paul, and for Sean, if you're not living life to the max... I don't live life at all. You know it. Peace. Later.